Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And Jesus is that light of life. This is not so much a Bible study, more like a some things to think about. Uh, number one, meet Alistair Crawley. He used to call himself the Beast, and he proclaimed that he was the most wicked man alive. He was an avowed Satanist. He did lots of books on magic and Satanism. So, yeah, he was, uh, yeah. Right now, uh, well, he died in, uh, oh, I don't know, quite a while ago. Uh, I think he died around World War II. I'm not sure. All I know is where he's at right now, he's not going to need an, a sweater or a winter coat. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> now he did a book uh, on magic. So, you know, magic is uh, yeah, something forbidden in the Bible. And the reason, my, my guess is the reason they have to go through all those incantations and rituals and all these things that they do is so that the devils, the demons, whatever you want to call them, uh, devils is, you know, is just uh, evil with a, a D, capital D in the front. But uh, in the Greek, uh, demon means little god. As in, you know, the fallen angels, right? So, um, so, yeah. Let's take a look at something. Now, in Acts 19, 19, uh, people, when they got saved, it says, many of them which all, uh, also which used curious arts, and we're talking about magic books, uh, brought their books together and burned them burn them before all men and they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver I don't know if these books were really expensive or if there was just a lot of them but yeah there was you know 50,000 pieces of silver that's a lot of silver Especially when you think about uh, Jesus was sold for what? 20 or 30 pieces of silver? 50,000 pieces of silver? That's a whole lot of stuff. So, all right. Um, Alistair Crawley, you can read his quote here, where he says, This serpent, Satan, you know, Genesis 3, is not the enemy of man. Oh, no. But he who made gods of our race, knowing good and evil, especially evil, he bade know thyself and taught initiation. Yeah. Yeah. You see, you get initiated. You know, it's like uh, a club. When you, uh, when they, you learn Satanism, it's, it's a club. You get initiated. You know, Masonic Lodge, you get initiated. All the groups. So, yeah. All I know is, um, he had a spirit guide that he called, or told him his name was Lem. Uh, maybe that was short for Lemon. I don't know. What, what do you do when uh, the, the life gives you lemons? Yeah. So, yeah, uh, probably, you know, fallen angel, right? Spirit guide. Now, I know in the so-called New Age movement, which I started getting looking into it in the late, 80, late 80s, um, they have spirit guides. And, um, which are, you know... Oh, they're not fallen angels that hate us. No, they're aliens. 
from another world and they want to help us. They want to help us go to hell. That's what they want. Yeah. You know, and, and you know, why all the push for aliens? You know, it, it makes you wonder. See, instead of a, a God, the, uh, the Lord of heaven and earth that created everything, no, they're space aliens, and they seeded the earth along with other places, and, you know, uh, we're their children, and we've been screwing up, and now that we learn about atomic warfare, you know, we're in danger of exterminating ourselves, and, and they just want to help us and, and take care of us and, and, you know, give us knowledge, which is uh, in the Greek, gnosis. Uh, you've heard of the uh, a doctor. Hey, doc, what's the prognosis? You know, what is the, uh, do you think this person's going to recover? What's the prognosis? Oh, well, the prognosis is not good. It's end stage cancer. You know, so that's the prognosis. They're going to die. Um, but gnosis means knowledge in Greek, if I remember. You've heard of Gnostics? Yeah, same word, same root word. So, uh, isn't it funny that uh, Lem looks exactly like those uh, E.T. kind of things, you know, the aliens that do all the alien abductions. And a lot of women report that when they were abducted, they were molested, if you catch my drift, um, which falls right into what happened in Genesis 6. So, yeah, and of course, uh, they call them, uh, they call them greys, right? And uh, here, uh, at number seven, you, uh, there was a book written about communion, about some guy that was communing or hanging out or uh, with an, uh, one of these fallen angel, demon, E.T., extraterrestrial uh, greys, they call them. So, yeah, I think I'd rather kind of pass on that kind of a deal, you know? Yeah. Um, but uh, some people are into that kind of thing, you know? Hey, they want to get taken up in their little UFO spaceships and whatever, you know? Uh, yeah, they came from... The heavens all right they were kicked out in revelation chapter 12 you know they were kicked out of heaven so all right uh let's see now this uh picture is uh from stargate sg1 i think that was the name of the show it was the longest running science fiction show of all time i mean it ran for what like 10 years or something like that and this is our friendly alien uh, his name was thor you know they always try to take all those um, legends and myths and weave it into the sh the show so yeah i i think i'm going to pass um on that but he was a good alien he was our friend in protecting earth and you know giving us knowledge and yeah right and uh here's this communion thing again uh whitley streber was the author's name i actually read this book in the late 80s and uh you know i always liked weird stuff but this is way out there you know it was around the t that time that my Bible studies when I was in ninth, what was it, ninth, eighth grade, eighth grade, eighth or ninth grade kicked in. I think I went, yeah, I went to a private Baptist school around eighth, ninth grade, and their Bible teachings kicked in around that time. And I'm like, wait a minute, this is, this is out there, you know, eh, this ain't no good. You know, I, I, I smelled a rat. Of course, I repented of all that, but yeah. So, that next comes E.T., another good alien. 
the extraterrestrial i remember what what did that come out like the late 70s or something i think that was steve steve then uh spiel and then uh berg yeah yeah why do they want to convince us that there's good aliens and he's got the glowing finger thingy and he can heal people uh yeah uh it makes you wonder what are they, why are they trying to convince us there's aliens maybe because they'd rather have people believe that aliens are the ones that put us on the earth instead of god almighty that wants us to follow his laws and his rules and do give him honor you know shit well honor him by our lives and everything else so and then um you got the gray aliens Ooh, yeah that that looks like a devil demon from hell doesn't it um you know i don't know if there are angels that or fallen angels that actually look like this i don't know but it is a common thing and i've read a lot of different stuff by a lot of different people uh trying to figure out their plans from a bible perspective yeah i don't know if i ever get it figured out i'll probably be dead but uh and with the lord hopefully he'll uh be happy to see me but uh supposedly the the gray aliens and the reptilians you know when like when jesus and john the baptist said they were a bunch certain group on the earth were a bunch of serpents oh yeah so all right then um then you got gray aliens uh another book my encounter with a gray alien no i never read this book but uh it makes you wonder you know yeah they're aliens and they're trying to help us they're not they're not really devils they tell us no they're not devils they're not fallen angels they're they're here to help us because they care about us um uh, i don't think so but uh, that's what uh people that are into this kind of stuff will be more than happy to uh tell you but i don't buy it but uh yeah you know will they uh fake some kind of alien invasion i don't know all right and then um this is a more recent movie uh it was called paul who's up for a close encounter oh yeah paul yeah he was a. Uh, uh i guess he came to earth or whatever and then the military grabbed him and uh locked him up and studied him and you know I, I don't know i i never watched the movie i've seen clips here and there and you know how it is you go to somebody's house and they're watching tv and then this garbage is on um yeah i mean i've seen clips of it and then he escapes and you know whatever gets back in his spaceship and flies off to hell or wherever the heck they go to and notice they always got that weird head and the eyes and uh yeah so they always got that weird thingy um and and of course they're real nice guys you know they always are right uh are they setting us up for some kind of alien encounter i don't know i don't know i mean with the technology that they have today uh they could fake an alien invasion with uh i i suspect that all those satellites that are up in space are some kind of image projectors i don't know holograms maybe I, this is just a guess this is not thus saith the lord this is just bob's kind of a guess you know because it makes you wonder why are there so many satellites up there probably surveillance too you know they want to be able to see every blade of grass in your yard so i don't know and then you got uh close encounters of the uh whatever kind 
Uh, I think that was another Spiel uh, and then the Berg uh, movie. I don't remember when that came out. I think that was the 80s. Uh, things are kind of a blur. Uh, you know, you got to realize I'm in my 60s. You know, I'm an old guy. Not exactly young anymore. But, uh, you know, uh, they uh, that was another great aliens where they came down and, you know, they want to talk to us and help us and teach us some things and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you know, whatever, dude. Uh, they're devils. They're the demons from going to hell, cast out of heaven. At least that's my guess. So why are they, why are all these movies about, you know, trying to convince us about aliens? You know, it makes you wonder. Uh, and then uh, in Close Encounters, you know, look at what the, uh, the gray alien looks like. Looks just like all the other gray aliens, doesn't it? Yeah. So, you know, it, 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 I don't know. Uh, I don't know if, uh, you know, the Bible has records that there are different types of angelic beings. Uh, you've got some that have wings. Uh, you've got Gabriel, you've got Michael. Uh, you had the devil who was probably an archangel. He took one of a third of the angels to hell, well, go into hell with him. And uh, then you got one that's got like four faces. Uh, you know, the one in Ezekiel and it's in uh, Revelation. So I don't know. I don't know. But, um, and then you got Yoda. Uh, Yoda. You know, Star Wars, boy, I'll tell you what, when Star Wars came out in the 70s, boy, everybody, that was the, that was the thing, you know. And what you don't know is Yoda, uh, it's a Yiddish word. I don't remember what it means, but it's a, it's a Yiddish word. Of course, Hollywood is very, yeah. Um, and then you got the Force. The Force. Luke, use the Force. Uh, isn't that magic and witchcraft? I think so. Yeah, magic and witchcraft. So, uh, yeah, use the force, Luke. And then you got the, uh, the War of the Worlds. Boy, when that came out in the 50s. Of course, I didn't see it until the 60s. But, uh, boy, that was a movie you'd want to see just before you get ready to go to bed, right? Yeah. Why are they trying to convince us? You know, you got good aliens, you got bad aliens. Are the good aliens going to fight the bad aliens? And then, uh, you know, we're going to all live in this utopia without the Bible, of course, and without Jesus, you know. Well, if the aliens were the ones that uh, seeded the earth with humanity, uh, it wasn't Jesus Christ that created everything. It was the aliens. And, of course, they're our friends. You know, so, I don't know. Um, and uh, what else do we have? Boy, I'll tell you what, there's been a, a slew of science fiction uh, stuff. Uh, how about um, Star Trek? I think uh, the, the picture you see now uh, was from the Corbomite Maneuver. Actually, one of my favorite episodes when I was a kid. Yeah, I used to watch Star Trek, you know. And, uh, you know, the aliens are checking us out, seeing if we're good or we're bad. And, you know, they are they got that big head and, the, you know, that, yeah. It makes you wonder. Uh, <laughs> uh, you, you, are, is it entertainment or is it brainwashing? Or is it a little bit of both? Uh, probably both, right? So, and then, um, what is it? Uh, they also, what, they redid uh, War of the Worlds. I think it was H.G. Wells that did the War of the Worlds. 
Uh, this War of the Worlds version that they did, uh, the tripods, that was what... Um, uh, uh, Tom Cruise. Yeah, Tom Cruise. Yeah, they redid the whole thing. Um, yeah, humanity is going to unite. We're all going to have an alien invasion and we're, the whole world's going to get together and put aside their differences. The communists and the capitalists and the Christians and the Muslims and the, you know, whatever. We're all going to be friends and fight against these aliens and unite the world in a one world government. Or is that the plan all along by the devil? You know, the Bible does talk about the beast uh, having the whole world under his control. So, I don't know. And then uh, here you got uh, the Star Trek again. Now this was uh, called Balak or Balak. And believe it or not, uh, that's a character name in the Bible. Uh, and not a good one either. And there's that gray looking alien again. Boy, it's amazing. You know, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, uh, gray aliens. What's up with the gray aliens? Now, if you want to read about Balak, you can read about Balak in Numbers chapter 22, 23, and chapters 24. And uh, you can read all about Balak. And funny how uh, they named that alien gray-looking thing uh, Balak. You know, yeah, it makes you wonder. And then here at... Uh, Let's see, uh, War of the Worlds again. This is the uh, alien. Uh, I think, yeah, this was the 1950s movie. Uh, you know, you know, they've been doing this crud for a long, long time. And, uh, you know, let's face it. If we all evolved, there is no God. So, you know, let's make friends with all the aliens and, uh, or maybe get together the whole earth and fight them. I don't know. And maybe that's the whole purpose of uh, Trump's and Biden's space force, which, uh, by the way, the, the symbol for the space force looks very much like uh, Star Trek, but I'll show you that <laughs> in a minute. Um, all right, and uh, let's see, this is, uh, this was, uh, this alien had the massive brain, and uh, uh, what episode was that? I forget what episode, but it was supposed to be the very, very, very first Star Trek, uh, it was the pilot, and with uh, Jeffrey Hunter, who actually played Jesus uh, back in the day, back in the 60s. And um, Hunter died, so they picked uh, uh, Kirk, or what's his name, Shatner, to play Kirk. But uh, yeah, this was, uh, he was with Jeffrey Hunter. And then uh, this guy is... Um, An Andorian, another alien being. So, boy, they got a lot of... Now, well, now we got a, a, a blue one. You know, blue in the Bible um, was representative of the law. And um, let me look that up real quick. All right, that's in Numbers chapter 15. In verse 38, it says, Speak. Oh, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations, and that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. And it shall be unto you for a fringe, that ye may look upon it, and remember all the commandments of the Lord 
to do them. And that ye seek not after your own heart and after your own eyes, after which ye use to go a whoring. So the ribbon of blue was to uh, uh, remind you of the law. All right, so, and here we go. Uh, another gray alien, kind of a brownish actually, from uh, Stargate SG-1. Another good alien. Um, now, we're coming up on the outer limits. There was a show actually called The Sixth Finger. And guess who the star was? A guy named David McCollum. Perhaps you've heard of him. He was Ilya Kiryakin in The Man from Uncle, opposite uh, Napoleon Solo. I forget his name. Um, but if you watch NCIS, he is Dr. Mallard. Ducky! Yeah. And where do they come up with this sixth finger stuff, huh? Now, the premise of the movie was this. Uh, some scientist invented a machine where he could go forward in evolution. Evolution. Go forward millions or uh, millions of years or whatever, and they, you know, evolution. And then uh, when they went forward in whatever, in evolution, he had this massive head. And uh, he had psychic powers, you know, magic. And he grew a sixth finger. What's, wait a minute, what's up with six fingers? What's up with that? Well, that's real simple. In 2 Samuel 21 20, and there was yet a battle in Gath where was a man of great stature that had on every hand six fingers and on every foot six toes four and twenty in number and he also was born to the giant you see the uh philistines some of them at least some of them were giants uh not all the canaanites were giants uh and the philistines were a uh branch of the canaanites In 1 Chronicles 20 and verse 6, And yet again, there was war at Gath. Who's fighting? Uh, the Philistines and Israel are fighting. Where was a man of great stature, whose fingers and toes were four and twenty, six on each hand and six on each foot, and he also was the son of the giant. So he was the son of the giant. And of course, uh, you listen to the modern Bible so-called scholars and they'll say, well, yeah, these guys were probably six foot three and everybody else was like five foot. You know, people were shorter back then. Uh, I don't think so. Bible reports that uh, uh, one of the giants' bed was like 12 foot. <laughs> you know, <laughs> guy's got a 12 foot bed. He doesn't need a 12 foot bed being six foot three you know or six foot six and uh yeah and yeah just because they got six fingers that doesn't mean anything uh yeah right they were freaks of nature because why were they giants well genesis 6 tells you what they are but nobody believes that anymore except for a few of us and here, this picture with the outer limits, uh, with the girl and the evolved man who has psychic mental powers and can do things with his mind, you know, notice the pointy ears and the big head and looks like a gray alien. Yeah, you know, it makes you wonder. Yeah, it really does makes you wonder. Uh, yeah, I... <sighs> I don't know how they're what they're doing or how they're going to pull this stuff off. I don't know. Maybe they're faking all this alien stuff to get people to lose their faith in God, or maybe they will try to fake some kind of a alien invasion. I don't know. Um, 
honestly, my opinion is, uh, look at the Space Force uh, insignia, and um, and then look at uh, Star Trek's insignia. I mean, they look pretty close. I don't know how many of you are Trekkies, but yeah, Starfleet Command. We're going to get together with all the aliens and be friends and fight against the Klingons and fight against the Romulans and the Borg or whatever other, yeah. Actually, I think the Space Force is to try to oppose Christ when he returns in glory with his cloud of witnesses and angels and all the resurrected, uh, those that are in Christ. But uh, that's just my guess. I think that's the entire purpose of the Space Force, although they might claim an alien invasion. You never know. I don't know. But somehow, um, uh, the man of sin, the son of perdition, the Antichrist, the beast, um, is going to have to show up. Uh, there's going to have to be a temple, because the Bible records that uh, there's, well, let me read that. All right, here we go. Um, that is in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. I don't care if you're a pre-tribber, post-tribber, mid-tribber, it don't matter. This is talking about the coming of Christ and us being gathered together with him. Verse 2. That that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. Don't be deceived. Paul, Jesus said in Matthew 24, deception was going to be prevalent in the last days. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day, what day? The second coming, the coming of the Lord. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. Ooh, yeah. Well, we got here by evolution, and we got seeded by aliens. God didn't create the heaven and the earth. Uh, is that a falling away first? Oh, yeah. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. The man of sin, son of perdition. He's got other names. Revelation, John called him the beast. Um, he's also called the Antichrist. That the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. He's going to be revealed one day. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now, unless this happened in 70 AD, which it didn't, it has to happen in the future. It has to happen in the future. So there has to be a temple. And by the way, there's a temple in San Paulo, Brazil. Uh, Solomon's Temple. Look it up. Brazil. It took them three and a half years, or, or maybe less than four years, I think, to, to build this thing. And the Temple Mount Faithful and the Temple Institute, two Jewish groups, have all the stuff they need to, to do the temple. They're just waiting for the go-ahead to do it. And my guess is that they're going to... Um, well, I think there'll be some kind of a catastrophe, whether it be an economic crash, which we're going to have worldwide, perhaps famine uh, uh, created, and or uh, natural type uh, weather disasters. I mean, read Job chapter one. It was Satan, not God, that brought a whirlwind that killed uh, destroyed the house that uh, Job's sons was in and killed him. 
Not God, Satan. Of course, God has Satan on a leash, but still that dog can bite, you know, as far as the Lord allows. I mean, when Moses opposed the magicians in Egypt under Pharaoh before the, you know, the, the Passover, before the first Passover, the magicians were able to turn uh, staffs into snakes. They were able to do some of uh, Moses' miracles. Well, you think they did that by their own power? No, it was the power of the devil. The devils. You know, and the Bible even records that the false prophet is going to have the power to do false miracles. I mean, they're going to be real miracles, but they're going to be lying miracles, you know, satanic. Uh, you think witches and Satanists don't ha see miracles? Of course they do. Magic wouldn't be magic if it, you know, I'm not talking about a kid's birthday party where the magician makes the pulls a rabbit out of a hat or makes a coin disappear. No, I'm talking about the real deal. You know, so now if you want you can read the whole thing on your own. But in Revelation 13, 13, and he, the false prophet, and he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Why does he do that? To devour his enemies, those that oppose him, those that are not in Christ. This is mimicking the same type of miracle that uh, Elijah did in the book of Kings when he was uh, confronting Jezebel's prophets of Baal, or Baal, or whatever you want to call it, Baal. Uh, he did the same thing. He brought fire down from the sky. There was 50 soldiers that were sent to the king to, to grab Elijah. He brought fire down from the sky and killed him. They did it again. Another 50 fire down from the sky killed him. He killed over 100 soldiers. Well, including the captains. Like 102. You know? And the, uh, the Jews at Passover set a plate, an extra empty plate, so for Elijah. They're expecting Elijah to come. But I think there's going to be two Elijahs. I think there's going to be the false prophets going to claim to be Elijah. And then he's going to be the prophet proclaiming the Antichrist is the Messiah. And he's going to be able to mimic the same miracles that Elijah did. And let me tell you something. Somebody wants to fight him. And he brings fire down from the sky and burns up the tanks? You think people aren't going to be going, wow, this guy's, you know, poof. And then the man of sin shows up and proclaims that he's God in the temple. Almost everybody's going to, to, to follow him. Almost everybody. Let's face it. You know, uh, it, there, how many people are going to oppose this guy? Nobody's going to be able to oppose him, except for the two witnesses. They're going to die, and then they're going to lie in the streets of Jerusalem for three days and three nights, and then the Lord's going to raise them from the dead, and boy, the world's going to be freaking out when that happens. You know, we might, I, I don't know, we might actually be the ones that witness all these end time events. I don't know. I don't know. But it wouldn't surprise me. But this, uh, this false prophet is going to, uh, you know, uh, he's going to, uh, well, let's just say nobody's going to be able to stand in front of the beast. And you got the satanic unholy trinity. The beast, uh, or the dragon, the false prophet, and the false prophet. The dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. The false prophet and the beast are men. And then, of course, the dragon is that old serpent called the devil and Satan, Revelation 12. So, you know, there you go. But I think there's going to be two Elijahs. I really do. I, I think there's going to be the real Elijah that's going to be one of the two witnesses. Let's look that up. Now, in Malachi 4 and verse 5, 
Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful, dreadful day of the Lord. And a lot of people will say, well, John the Baptist was Elijah. Uh, well, no. John the Baptist, they asked him if he was Elijah, and he said no. And John the Baptist knew who he was. And besides, if John the Baptist was Elijah, was Jesus being here on the earth a dreadful day of the Lord? Was it dreadful that Jesus walked the earth healing people, raising the dead, healing the sick, making the lame to walk, giving sight to the blind, healing lepers? Was that dreadful? No. The dreadful day of the Lord is for those that are rejects the gospel, rejects Jesus Christ. That's going to be the dreadful day of the Lord when the Lord destroys all his enemies with fire and brimstone. No, Elijah the prophet is going to be one of the two witnesses that have yet to come. And don't let anybody tell you that in 70 AD that was the fulfillment of Bible prophecy. It, it, it was a partial fulfillment. But Jesus didn't return yet in glory. I haven't seen the cloud of witnesses. And the Bible records that every eye will see him return. Every eye. Every eye. Did you see him come? Well, then it didn't happen in 70 AD. Sorry, preterists, but you guys are screwed up in the head. Who's going to be the second witness? I don't know. Some people say Moses. Some people say Enoch. Reason being Enoch is because he's one of the only people that never died. I got a one hour and 40 minute study on the life of Elijah, where I go into this in a little bit more, de a lot more detail. If you're interested which I hope you are. So, all righty. Uh, let's see, one more thing. You know, I really like George Carlin. I know he was a, a heathen, and sadly the churches uh, turned him away from what could have been, you know, just like they tried to do to me when I was in... Uh, middle school or junior high school but uh george carlin man i'm telling you he had a he had a wit about him i wish he'd have gotten saved but it didn't happen but george carlin says think of how stupid the average person is and realize half of them are stupider than that boy uh, that's so true and when it comes to church people don't think uh, they're any better so all right, well, you know, I honestly do believe that we're going to see prophecy fulfilled. I really do. Um, I don't know. Will I live to see the coming of the Lord? I don't know. All I know is I have tried to do my best to um, warn people about all the devils in the churches, uh, behind the pulpits, so-called pastors that are really wolves you know, that care nothing for the flock. Only thing they care about is their little tithes. So that's all they care about. Oh, you got a tithe. Tithe to the Lord. Here's our address. Send it to uh, Pastor I'm a Greedy SOB or uh, Son of a Bastard. Bastard is a Bible word, by the way. So, alrighty. Uh, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.